Hello, and welcome to Krakenfold. Today I'm going to be talking about Thor's hammer, often called Mjolnir, its Old Norse name, and it's the most popular and most widely recognised of the Old Norse god symbols. And that's possibly because Thor was the most popular of the Old Norse gods. But where did this hammer come from? What is the symbolism behind it? And so welcome to the story of the myth of Thor's hammer and the history of Thor's hammer. And welcome to Krakenfold. So I'm going to tell this story in two sections. The first one, the actual Old Norse myth of Thor's hammer, found in the second part of the prose Edda called the Skullskarpamolo. Uh, and the second section is the history behind the hammer and the video will have chapters uh, at the bottom if you wish to skip to a particular part in case you don't want to hear the myth and you just want to go and find out the history. Also if you do like the video please click like, it doesn't cost anything, just a second of your time. Please subscribe to the channel, it does mean a lot and it means other people get to watch these videos as well. So thank you very much for all your support so far and let me start by telling you the myth of the origin of Mjolnir. So, Loki has always been known as a trickster, and on the day this story starts, it's no different. Looking to cause mischief, he decided that that night he would sneak into the bedroom of Sith, who was the wife of Thor, and she was renowned for having long, glowing golden hair. And Loki thought it would be funny to cut it off. And so while she slept, Loki crept into her room and cut off Sif's hair. When the morning came, uh, the result of Loki's trickery had become apparent uh, and neither Thor nor Sif found it funny. In fact, Thor was so angry with Loki, he threatened to break every bone in Loki's body. When Loki begged and pleaded with him to let him go and he promised that he would travel to the realm of the dwarves, Svartalheim, and would ask the dwarves to make a new head of hair for Sif, even more beautiful than the one she was now without. Uh, Thor agreed to this and let Loki go to see the dwarves. But Loki was a bit troubled because how was he able to get the dwarves to make new hair? They would surely want some kind of payment. And so Loki came up with this plan to play dwarves off each other. So there were the sons of Ilvadi and Broki and Sindri who were brothers. And he said to them both, make the best gifts and he present them to the gods. However, Broca and Sindri wouldn't take part in the challenge unless there was a wager. And the wager was Loki's head. And they said if they won the challenge and made the best gifts, they wanted Loki's head. And Loki had no choice but to accept that. And so the dwarves set to work. So the sons of Ilvali forged a new head of hair for Sith, but also two other gifts. A Viking longship, Skidbladnir, uh, the best of all ships, so light and thin it would always find a favourable wind and could be folded up and placed in one's pocket. And then Gungnir, the deadliest of all spears that would always hit its target. Broca and Sindri were skilful dwarves and Loki could not afford them to win. And so as they worked, Loki transformed himself into a fly so he could fly around and cause mischief. And so as Sindri pulled his crashing out of the fire, Fly stung his hand, but this didn't stop Sindri and his creation was that of a living boar with golden hair which bristled in the light and the boar, who he named Gullimbursti, uh, could also run better than any horse, even through water or air. Sindri then went on to work on another piece of gold as Broca worked on the bellows and the fly bit Broca on the neck, but he didn't stop him working the furnace and Sindri drew out a magnificent ring called the Drupnir, and this ring every ninth night produced eight new golden rings of equal weight to itself. But there was one more item the dwarves wanted to make, and Sindri put iron on the hearth and told Broca that they had to be precise and meticulous in its working as any mistake, no matter how small, would be most costly. Hearing this, Loki immediately flew onto Broca's eyelid and stung him there, and his eyelid swelled up, blocking his sight, yeah, blood in his eye. And that meant he blew the bellows one moment too much. Out of the fire, Sindri produced a hammer 
of unsurpassed quality. A hammer which would never miss its mark and would always return to its owner after being thrown. But it wasn't perfect, it had one flaw. And that flaw was that its handle was too short. Sinju was really upset with himself as it almost ruined the piece. But it was still an exceptional piece and he named it Mjolnir. So all these great gifts the dwarves took to the gods. And when the dwarves got to Asgard, they were, and certainly uh, Brocklin and Sindri, wanted to claim Loki's head because they thought they'd win. So when the dwarves got to Asgard, they presented the gifts. And uh, to Thor, they gave Sif's new hair and the hammer Mjolnir. And to Odin, when the ring dropped near and the spear gung near, and Freya received Skidbladnir and the Gullinbursti. And the gods were immensely grateful to receive these gifts, especially Thor, uh, because he saw Mjolnir as being immeasurable to help him in the battle against Jotun. And so the gods agreed Sindri and Brokkr had made the better gifts, if only just, and so said that Loki owed the dwarves his head. The dwarves approached Loki, knives drawn, but Loki was cunning and argued that cutting his neck was not part of his head, and so he could not be cut off. The gods had to reluctantly agree, you know, saying that Loki did have a point, and so instead they let the dwarves sew Loki's mouth. And after that, the dwarves returned to their fort. And that is a myth about how Thor came into possession of Mjolnir. Now, that myth didn't develop out of nowhere, and knowledge of Mjolnir would have been known well before this myth was created. In fact, before the time when even Thor was named as a god. The hammer must have been considered sacred before then. And let me explain how we can infer this. The name given to Thor's hammer, Mjolnir, is derived from the Proto-Germanic Meldoniaz, which is the root uh, of Malanat. Uh, and that means to grind uh, or crush in the way a grindstone uh, crushes wheat. And so it could be interpreted that the hammer meant sort of a grinder or a crusher to the old Norse. And then there is some belief that a grindstone itself was actually the head of the hammer in uh, early myth, in early Proto-European myth. And the English word as well, mallet, a term we use to describe a large hammer, that too comes with the Proto-European mele meaning to grind or crush. So the root of the word, and therefore the awareness of hammer, could itself be at least 5,000 years old if it originated from the Proto-Indo-European. And so let me apply this to storm gods. Now I've touched on storm gods in the third of my Proto-Indo-European creation myth videos, and I'll link to it above my head um, because it will give you a lot of background to what I'm about to say. But in synopsis, uh, European storm gods had common uh, traits. They had uh, goats that flew through the sky, they used hammers, or more often axes. And these storm gods um, all had names that stemmed from the same source, and that had been Perkinus. And because we see this name uh, cognate with all the storm gods' names around Europe, they all came from a single point, we can infer that the storm god itself stemmed from the original Proto-Indo-European. So that's it links the time frame of the hammer with that of a storm god that used it to the Proto-Indo-Europeans and perhaps pushes the age of Mjolnir and the storm gods back to maybe even 8,000 years old. And because of this, um, we know that it exists before any traces of the word Thor or Thunor uh, come into existence because these are more Germanic. Um, and therefore, uh, Thor himself as explained in uh, the other video, was also not the storm god. He was more powerful than that. He was a, more of a sky god, more of a sky deity. Um, he's never known as a god of thunder. He's never talked about that in any of the old Norse writings. That position was Fjörgin, and that name too is cognate with Perkinus. So now the explanation to show uh, the relationship of Perkinus with Fusion uh, is a bit long, watch, watch the video, that's the best way to do it. Um, 
we can say that the hammer and the gods' names are linked, goes back thousands of years, but all we have is words. We don't have actually any physical or tangible evidence that there's a god holding a hammer. So how do we find this? Well, the most popular hammer items we know of are the trinkets, the Thor hammer trinkets. And they're popular today, but they're also popular about a thousand years ago. Many trinkets found are from the 10th or 11th century. So just as Scandinavia was becoming Christianized. Um, so it's the latter part of the Viking era. But the trinkets aren't just found in Scandinavia, they're also found in Europe and the United Kingdom. Now, as I say, the 10th century is quite late in Old Norse, far later than we would expect to see representations of Mjolnir. And so looking elsewhere, we see that there is some belief that the oldest Thor's hammer trinket was found in Gilton in Kent, in England, which is in the southeast tip of England and the point closest to mainland Europe. And I'll put a picture up of the image of the hammer, uh, or the hammers found now, there's two of them uh, together, and these have been interpreted by some as the earliest version of Thor's hammers. Now, please bear in mind that these hammers were found with other tools, such as trowels, spades, a spear, and they would have hung from a belt rather than a necklace. And the trinkets themselves uh, date to about the 6th century CE. So sometime before the Vikings came to England, and they looked to originate from the Christianized Merovingian uh, Empire, which is what is now France, part of Germany, uh, Switzerland and Austria, that sort of area. And this uh, region, this kingdom, influenced Kent because of the proximity. So in truth, that trinket that came from Europe to Kent, whilst it probably offered charm and protection to the wearer, it probably wasn't a representation of Thor's hammer. So if we discount this, the next oldest hammer actually found is also not from Scandinavia, but from northwestern Germany, so the old Saxon uh, Empire, and an area that did have links to Denmark in the Viking Age, trading and, and beyond. Now this oldest hammer is dated to around 700 CE, um, and it has a long handle, so it doesn't represent the old Norse myths short-handled version, uh, and its context is also very unique and cannot necessarily be placed as a, a trinket, again, as a, a person would wear. And because of this, there is some scepticism that this should be considered the first Thor's hammer's trinket. The hammers that do meet the trinket criteria, the earliest ones, were found off islands off the northwestern German coast, uh, just below Denmark. And they have an interesting design, again, a, a longer handle, um, and they were found in Saxon burials. But most interesting of all, is that they're dated to around the 8th or early 9th century. And whilst they look like some examples of Thor's hammers found in Denmark, uh, especially at the Denmark uh, Ring Castle, the largest ring castle uh, there was in Denmark, uh, Agersborg, uh, the ones found in the Old Saxon territory are literally 200 years older than the ones found in Denmark. So they were using hammers it seems long before Denmark. But the trinkets which are best known, the Thor's Hammers trinkets, have been found in Scandinavia. Um, but they were found in very poor circumstances or uncontrolled and undocumented circumstances. So it's hard to put context around them. Um, and these were embossed silver and highly elaborate designs with shorter handles. Uh, and these are the Thor Hammer trinkets we've come to understand. But these are 10th and 11th century items. So whilst these hammers trinkets show an understanding of Mjolnir, um, they are much younger than the myth of Mjolnir itself. So are there any earlier hammers? Well, the answer to this is yes, but they were not trinkets and they were not made of silver, iron or bronze, but they were carved. They were carved into stone um, and painted with red ochre, a red dye. And what I'm specifically talking about are something called petroglyphs, or rock carvings. And in Scandinavia, these were usually linked to images of uh, ethophallic human figures, so humans throwing off their genitals in all their splendour. And these have been found in a number of places, with the best examples uh, in uh, Tannum and uh, Namfolsen in Sweden, and in Atla in Norway. And the images that I'm showing show men swinging axes, and occasionally hammers, uh, suggesting the axe and the hammer could have been used as a fertility symbol back then, perhaps in association with a hammer weapon, which 
when compared to a spear would be a lot more powerful in terms of melee combat and this can be linked further to the storm god images um, for the vikings because there are some that actually have horned heads much like a goat and to finally help with the age of the myth it is also known that one of the symbols also used to represent thor's hammer by the these people, this culture, was the swastika. And this must have been introduced into Scandinavia quite early because the Lapish sky gods, Horagals, uh, who derived from Thor, took that symbology with him. And we have images um, showing the, the Lapish gods holding two hammers with this swastika. And these carvings are at least 3,000 years old, some perhaps as old as 8,000 years long before the old Norse myth of Mjolnir and after the Proto-Indo-European um, culture would have started to gain influence in Scandinavia. And this is where we have the first example where we see a sort of a sacred hammer that would eventually become Mjolnir. So I hope you found that interesting, that the story of, of Mjolnir and, you know, it is uh, an age-old and ancient sacred item that stems from the Proto-Indo-Europeans but has been well established certainly in Scandinavian myth and the myth of, of Germania, certainly Northwest um, Germany as it is now. And so any questions please ask away as always. There would have been more videos but uh, the four I recorded today all out of focus so I've got to fix my camera. Um, so uh, the next videos may take a little longer to get to you uh, but thank you very much for all your support uh, it's been incredible, thousand subscribers. I will do a video of that that is in focus um, to say thank you and to answer a few questions. So until then, please stay safe and stay well. And this was Cracker.